We've been living in Denmark for five years and we love calling it home, but it may not be for everybody. There's 194 other countries that may be a better fit for you. So today we're gonna to talk about nine reasons why maybe you should not move to Denmark. Yeah, everyone has must-haves, whether they're looking to get a new apartment or move to a new country. So if any of these things are on your must-have list, it might be time to either reconsider coming to Denmark or reattune your expectations. Now, the first reason why maybe you shouldn't move to Denmark is if you really want to master the Danish language. <laughs> now, that's not just because the language is hard, but it's because a lot of people aren't going to speak Danish to you because of the way that you're going to speak it. Danes have trouble with accents, and everything in the Danish language really is built on the pronunciation. So it's very difficult for Danish, native Danish speakers to listen to somebody with a foreign accent. If you're trying to learn Danish before you move to Denmark, it's also difficult because some of the apps that are out there aren't gonna give you the kind of Danish that you really need to know. They're gonna teach you phrases like, Anden spies a broden, or the duck eats the bread. And that's wonderful that you can say that, but are you really gonna use that in a conversation? The pronunciations aren't very great on those apps as well, and they also teach you some outdated or just kind of different ways of speaking that you may not find in day-to-day -day life in Denmark, like saying farvel instead of goodbye. Uh, you wouldn't really use that word unless you were saying goodbye to the queen or maybe the prime minister or something like that. So kind of steer clear of those apps. If you do want to learn Danish, we suggest that you do do that, and we suggest you do it once you get here and sign up for Danish lessons in country. But a possible controversial take is that if you're coming from somewhere and you don't have a native English fluency, you may want to just brush up on your English because you'll be using that most often when you're communicating with Danes and other foreigners that are living in Denmark. Yeah, one of the funny jokes, especially from our Scandinavian friends that they like to have about Danes, is that the most common phrase in the Danish language is basiodu, which means, what did you say? Simply because sometimes Danes can't understand what they're saying to each other. It's not easy. You definitely should learn when you get here, but Derek's totally right. Don't wait. Don't take the time ahead of time to do it. Be ready when you come here, and it's a great way to meet friends as well. A second reason why you should consider not moving to Denmark is if you absolutely have to have sunny and beautiful weather every day of the year. Now, that's not to say that the weather doesn't turn nice here in, in Denmark as well, but especially in the winter months, I hope you like to have your weather be gray, gray, and gray with a side of rain almost every single day. At the same time, when the weather does turn nice, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, that first sunny weekend that you have in the springtime is heaven. You forget how many people actually live in Copenhagen because suddenly everyone comes from inside their apartments and goes to cover every single square centimeter of the city. If you go along the harbor, you just see a whole bunch of people covering every single square inch you can, trying to soak up the rays and then get back from the winter time. There's a reason why you recommend having vitamin D pills to make it and avoid the seasonal depression here. Also, the standing joke is always that everyone loves summer in Denmark. It's the best weekend of the year. Yeah, it's true. And when the, the summer is nice in Denmark, it's just perfect. There's nowhere else you'd rather be in Europe or around the world. So um, don't think that it's always that way. But uh, most of the time, most of the year, you, you may struggle if you need it to be sunny and warm uh, to get by. Okay, a third reason why maybe you should not move to Denmark is if you aren't a vampire. Um, all right, a, a weird way to say it, but basically if you can't deal with the early darkness that comes in the winter, basically from October until April, it's darker than it is at least where we came from and that can be difficult to adjust to. Um, having such short daylight can really put a damper on things. And if you think that it's only in the winter that you might struggle, get ready for the rest of the year. So um, starting in, in April, everything just kind of gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And those long days of, of sunlight are nice at first, but eventually it can kind of eat away at you because you wake up at uh, four o'clock in the morning, uh, you run to the toilet and then you come back to lay down in bed and it's bright in your bedroom uh, starting at four o'clock in the morning and you hear the birds chirping and it's difficult to sleep even with the best blackout shades. Where we come from in Philadelphia, the longest day of the year uh, on the summer solstice, the sun sets at 821. And in Denmark, we hit an 821 sunset uh, in Copenhagen on April 27th, which means that every day between April 27th and the actual summer solstice, the days are just getting longer and longer and longer than we have ever experienced before we moved to Denmark. So with the sun setting um, on the summer solstice here in Copenhagen around 11.20 uh, in the evening, that's 
pretty different than we were used to. And that is especially difficult to adjust to. So if you think that you might have trouble with light balance, and believe me, it's a kind of a hidden thing that you don't realize until you move here, maybe Denmark won't be the best place for you to live. Yeah, so that's the flip side. In the winter time, you need the vitamin D pills to avoid seasonal depression. And in the summertime, blackout shades. Best investment you're going to make here. So a fourth reason not to move to Denmark is if you're coming expecting to see the beautiful Scandinavian mountains. Ah, Scandinavia. The fjords where the mountains meet the sea. Uh, wait, that's that's Norway. That's every there. other Scandinavian country. Yeah, nope. Denmark, where the slightly rolling hills gently abut the sea. <laughs> Not quite as romantic. It's kind of funny though, because even friends of ours, educated, worldly people are like, oh, it has to be amazing. You live in Scandinavia. You go skiing all winter long. Uh, no, the really the only skill, ski hill in the entire country is on top of a trash incinerator. At least we're creative here. <laughs> Yeah, and even the uh, the winter weather is a little bit different. You know, coming from the Northeast in the U.S., we actually enjoy getting one or two snowstorms a year. Now, by 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 March, you're kind of sick of it, but we really don't get a lot of snow in, in Denmark. And in fact, in the, the five years that we've lived here, it's only really been once or twice that there's been actual measurable snow. So we actually need to travel for that. Um, in Denmark, you kind of have the winter tires without the actual winter weather. And it's, um, you know, can, can be something that you don't realize you might miss the snow if you're used to it. Yeah, so that's why everyone takes that week six school holiday to go up to Norway or go down to Austria. And it's also why Denmark has exactly a single winter Olympic medal. Good job, women's curling team. Okay, the fifth reason why maybe Denmark isn't necessarily the home for you is if you want to move here and expect to actually be Danish. Um, you know, it's just not going to happen, but that's okay. Uh, if you move to Denmark and you think that you're going to learn Danish, speak it with no accent, um, you're going to grasp all of the traditions and the, the foods and just totally become Danish yourself, it's not really going to happen. And that's fine. Um, you know, Danes are very proud people. So it's going to be tough to really fully um, be considered Danish. But they don't want you to do that. You know, Danes are very worldly people. They love other cultures. They travel the world. And they're going to be very interested in you for what makes you special. So if you try to give up your Americanness or you try to give up your uh, French personality or your um, Italian uh, heritage, then they're going to see through that. And Danes aren't going to want you to do that. It's what makes you special. So you have to find a balance if you move here of setting your expectations on, yes, fully embrace Danish culture, but don't give up your own uh, because that's something that makes you special and your Danish friends are going to want to experience that too. And honestly, for us, as we made the journey going from expats to immigrants here, part of the fun has been able to get a little bit deeper into Danish culture and be able to find those blends on what's Danish and what's American for us. And that's part of why taking an American tradition like Thanksgiving has been super fun to bring here and turn it into Thanksgiving every, oct every November. So reason six why you may not want to move to Denmark is if you're coming here and still expect to have that taste of home with your native foods and your native restaurants there. Now, that's not to say that Copenhagen is not an international city. I mean, you have many Michelin starred and rated restaurants all over the city. It's known for being the center of the new Nordic cuisine. But at the same time, if you go into the various grocery stores, the international aisle is going to be a little bit limited to maybe a little bit of taco mix and some Asian noodles. So a challenge is going to be if you really need to maintain that taste of home, maybe a little bit more difficult to come here, though you certainly can find different ethnic stores so you can find that taste of home coming in here. But there is a certain way that Danes like to eat that tends to be across where the, the various menus are, be it in the canteen in your workplace or school or just what you see in the restaurants or the grocery stores around here. So be aware if you really need to have that taste of home, make sure you pack it when you come back on your last trip back. Yeah, and get ready for fish on Wednesdays because that's a, a big thing you'll see in any Danish canteen. Uh, but you'll get used to it and you just may have to live without some tastes of home that you really like, uh, especially spices and, and things like that. But you will adjust. The food here is actually pretty decent, even though you may not have Danish takeaway in your local city that you're coming here from. And that's why we have the bottle of ranch dressing in the fridge. Okay, another reason why maybe Denmark isn't the best place for you to call home is if you don't really care for alcohol. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody in Denmark is a big drinker and, and drunk all the time, but there are a lot of Danish 
traditions and cultural things that are related to alcohol, whether that's a Christmas party, um, different work events, different social events that you may be invited to early on in your time in Denmark. There's a lot of alcohol involved with them, and that could be different depending on the culture uh, from which you uh, moved to Denmark from. Um, now, that's not to say that you can't be a sober stand uh, bystander for, for these events, but it's just going to mean that it could make you a little bit uncomfortable if you have trouble with that. Or if maybe you have a fragile sobriety or you're just turned off by other people drinking, then maybe you'll have some conflicts or culture clashes when you move to Denmark. Um, and it's something that you should consider. Even if you do like drinking, there may be some things that are going to be a bit different uh, or a bit more difficult for you, especially if you don't like certain tastes like anise or dill or caraway that you'll find in a lot of Danish liquors um, that are parts of the tradition. So it may be tough for you to embrace this side of Danish culture and Danish tradition if you're not a big drinker or you don't like drinking in general. But at the same time, there's plenty you can do here if you're not a drinker. Yeah. Again, there's amazing museums, activities, nature that you can do. And people are very open-minded and very accepting if you choose not to raise a glass of snaps along with everybody yeah. else at the Christmas party. So don't be scared away by this. Yeah, they're not going to push it on you. But just know that if that's something that could make you feel uncomfortable, maybe take that into consideration and look at one of those other 194 countries you could live in. Now, the eighth reason why you maybe shouldn't move to Denmark is if you are hyper, hyper ambitious. Now, that's not to say that there aren't world-class companies out of Denmark. I mean, world leaders in wind energy and shipping and logistics and those colorful construction toys that really hurt when you step on them, they're all coming here from Denmark. But at the same time, this isn't a place like New York or London where you have a cutthroat scene where people are going to be stepping on top of each other to make it to the top. In fact, Danish work culture actually is kind of why a lot of people come here. It's one of the places where I'd say, and we've said in multiple videos, that there really isn't a work-life balance as much as there is a work-life separation and an expectation here. And it's also not to say that if you come here, you can't move up the ladder inside various companies. I mean, obviously Danish companies have CEOs, but the expectation is that you're not going to make it there by climbing on top of other people. Or if you do it, you certainly are doing it in a much more collaborative way. It's a bit of a cliche to say that something called Janteloen drives a lot of the Danish ethos, but it is a culture where people are expected not to stand out too, too much. And consensus and camaraderie are two really core tenets of not just the society, but also the workplace as well. Though there are a lot of great business opportunities when you come to Denmark. There's a vibrant startup scene, especially here in Copenhagen, showing that there certainly are opportunities for people to be entrepreneurial and start their own businesses. And also you'll find that people tend to actually change jobs quite often. So maybe they may not want to be seen as a climber inside their company, but especially in the Copenhagen area, it's not unusual to change jobs every two or three years. Yeah, so ambitious, try to tone that down a little bit, but work hard and find the right tone and you'll be just fine. You want to be proud, but you don't want to be boastful. And uh, somebody who brags a lot just definitely will clash, not just at work, but in general. If you're trying to flash around material things or, or um, you know, show off your success in, in ways that make other people feel less than, you're just not going to get too far in Danish society. And another reason why maybe Denmark isn't the best home for you is if you're one of those people people that make friends everywhere you go and you're super extroverted. That kind of in-your-face personality is really going to turn away and turn off a lot of Danish people. Um, you know, if you're that kind of person that makes friends everywhere, maybe you haven't lived in Denmark. <laughs> the reason why isn't that Danes aren't friendly and the internet is full of people coming off with that take and you maybe have heard us say it on this channel before but we just don't this we just don't agree with that uh you know danes are super friendly except friendship in denmark is very deliberate so it's finding friends in activities finding friends in sports finding friends with a purpose you're not necessarily going to just walk up to a stranger and start a conversation and yeah maybe that happens in 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 some places okay but overall that can be taken as a little bit off-putting if you're just going up to people with no purpose outside of um some small exceptions like a party or something like that where it's a planned activity that's supposed to be social. If you're just walking up to strangers, you may not get too far with them as far as building an actual friendship. Um, again, Danes socialize with a purpose and that's what you're going to find when you move to Denmark. So if you're one of those, oh, I meet people everywhere, may not work so well and come across so well in Denmark. 
Yeah, probably one of my favorite stories is shortly after we moved here, one of our good friends from the U.S. came over. Big personality, likes talking to everybody. We're in the grocery store and he walks up to the cashier and says, Hey, how you doing? And she looked at him like he was a crazy person. And I think it's just a little bit of the way things work here that let everyone kind of be in their own space and just wait for them to ask you if you want the receipt. Say night talk and have a new day. Yeah, so the striking up those conversations can be a little bit off-putting, but that's not to say that you can't make friends easily in Denmark. In fact, we have a an entire playlist of videos right here that you can watch now and learn different ways to make friends while living in Denmark the right way. And we'll also have this video here, which is going to show you uh, our reaction to a video somebody made about their experience living in Denmark and why they moved out. So we break this down and talk about what went wrong for her in that video. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Make sure you check out these other videos, and hi, hi. Hi, hi.